I don't get it. Like, I, I know that people want to be more level with the kids. And, but you can't be like the kids. So I think that's another there, main thing too. They want to be like, you're not there. in the big brother, big sister program. You oh, are a teacher. Brilliant. Brilliant. Hey, everybody. Oh. I caught myself a good one today. So um, I'm super excited <laughs> about this conversation. But before we move forward, thank you so much. Comment, subscribing, all of the stuff you're doing. The channel's totally going so crazy. Ah, and I'm getting all these great interviews and it's making me so happy. But that being said, we're all participating in this. And again, I really appreciate everybody participating to help get back to some form of sanity, <laughs> if that's even possible at this point. So today I have this beautiful, amazing guest and um, she reached out Aww. to me and I'm super, super high. No, I'm so excited to talk to you because what you sent me was pretty profound. But what's so cool <laughs> is that I think, you know, people like you are reaching out to me, which says a lot. You guys care. You care to, express, yeah. to say, expose what's going on here. But before we get into that, um, this is V and V is going to introduce uh, themselves. They have to be anonymous. You'll figure, you'll see yeah. why in a little while. So hi V, thanks for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. First of all, I'm being sassy. Uh, <laughs> I, I, right I just, on. I, Reason. I'm so petty. Oh my god, I had to. Awesome. I had to. Right. Oh on. my goodness. Um. So yeah. First of all, thank you so much for making a space where like people can have respectful discourse about all this going on because I can never speak about this type of stuff because especially with the left who's apparently so open, they're not, and I can't have a conversation with them. And I mean, no. you're apparently right, but you're. I, I say I liberal and like, but I'm realistic. That's, That's what right. I say. So, That's but th th thank you so much for doing this. So okay. I've been watching your video on like, I, I'm, I've watched like Blair's and, and Ariel's close <laughs> chill. I'm so sorry about that. Um, needs attention. So now yeah, needs attention. It is baby. He's such a hog. Come here, you. So, uh, yeah, I've been working in education and working with kids for 16 years. Um, inside, yeah, inside and outside of schools, uh, kids either have intellectual or physical disabilities okay. or behavioral issues and sometimes they don't at all but yeah. big bonds are made and uh i really just wanted to speak on on the crazy tiktok teachers that make educators look bad and like we Thank don't you. censor ourselves because we do and there wow. are people who don't want to teach your kids about certain topics and also i would like to point out yes i'm anonymous but that doesn't mean that i'm a coward it doesn't mean that i don't believe in what i'm saying and that's not what i want to pass on and that also goes for all of your other guests too i want yes. to speak for them but i Thank just want to like Thank i you. would love to i would love to show my face but i i can't no so. no but but this is what i first off thank you for all that secondly it, it it actually is very important that people understand why people like you and my other guests have to be anonymous that's the part that should shock it makes this interview much more powerful as far as i'm concerned because it's real <laughs> she, she's not just doing this <laughs> to make some kind of you know statement about being no it is real she could lose things she could you know there's just you know layers of why this particular person has to be anonymous that should piss people off number one but that being said we respect it all of us here respect that you're most importantly saying what you need to say here and i, I don't care if yes. you came on with a mickey mouse hat on or <laughs> whatever it doesn't matter to me the, the information this is what we need right now it's kind of scary isn't it where do we it, live in 1940 it, I... nazi germany like what time no, like I'm, I know that I'm not even saying anything rude. Nope. It's it's just one of those things where people are so you can't say that you can't say that, and I censor right. myself so much. I feel like I don't even know how to speak anymore, or where I, oh, wow. I can say certain things. So right. I don't know how much I can actually cut myself off, or what I can and can't say. So that's very yes. frustrating. But at least. Yes with a lot of my friends, I can. And I know that some of them yes. are gonna watch it. And I know that some other people are gonna watch it. And uh -huh. maybe we bitch about how we hate oh. our way feminism, but yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. <laughs> but no, but yeah. it's just, so you're an educator, which is even more profound. I, yeah, yeah. That's why 
Thank you, thank you from the I bottom know. of my heart for, for showing up because we need to hear exactly what's going on in this. Because yeah. when, when we see when we see these teachers with, I'm just going to use queer teachers for for an example. When we see these yeah. kinds of things with, you know, and I don't care if you're a queer teacher, LGBT, whatever that even means to you, I don't care. What I care about what? is what are you bringing to the classroom. What is it that is happening in this classroom between you and a student, right? That now exactly. I'm seeing with my own eyes. I'm, I'm not, not just, just saying this. I see it on TikTok with this. They have, they come to this with an agenda. I do believe oh, this. So let, let's get into it's that crazy. as an educator. What, so what, what age group are you teaching? Are you there with? Okay. So I've, I've literally started from kindergarten oh. to high school. Okay. And right. some kids, it's like I've watched them go into high school and oh. I build huge bonds with these great. kids. Right. So right now, and now I'm with, I'll just say older kids. Okay, great. Um, so I'm with, I'm with older kids. Right. Um, and uh, I love oh. them. I can actually have proper conversations with them. Mm -hmm. uh, that I also, they, they're at a point too oh. where they need to learn when they need to draw the line that they're telling me yeah. and they know they ask me certain questions and i'll say you know like i i can't answer that question because right. your parents but... need to answer that question so watching like and i had to do that the other day uh i had a class and they okay. were they were learning about um uh well because i'm teaching the topic after school and all of a sudden they started talking about lgbtq and i went okay um don't want to talk about it because this course has nothing to do with it and one person one of the kids said oh i don't like lgbtq well i'll take that back i like it but i don't like it if it's in your face but i but i'm okay with it so even the kids are noticing and the thing so since i'm working with older kids um it's like I'm watching these TikToks and it's always right after work in their cars, just so they really remember what happened. And they go, you know, uh, this kid is changing their pronouns. They've trusted me. They told me I feel amazing. And they give me also a vibe that's very much like a suck to you, mom and dad. Like, I'm going to do what I want. That's but right. they didn't have the balls to say it themselves or just the coho like the yep. proverbial pro cojones to do it so they're kind of doing that through the kid and they're and they're going oh. telling uh and the teachers aren't telling uh admin sometimes and that's very dangerous so if you think about it if i have a kid who yeah like the, oh. these tiktok teachers so I'm very lucky. I'm in a community where we're very, very verbal about what's oh. going on with kids. And we know, like, this isn't appropriate. Like, even with the LGBTQ club, and have them there as a safe space. We know that they like to talk about certain things with their yeah. friends. Yeah. But we never oh. force them or tell them, oh, you're this gender. Oh, yeah. you're that gender. We just okay. say, you feel like that? Great. So I thought, and if you think about it this way, if you came across a child who said, I want to hurt myself, would you tell that kid or say to that kid after school, oh, they trusted me with something that they would never tell anyone. They're hiding it. I feel so honored and so amazing. I'm yeah. going to keep it to myself. Yeah. So people need to look at that. But you can't do that because the number one thing that I talk about with my kids, I have heard from very, very young to way older hey miss can i uh can i tell you a secret and i say no i can't or it's uh it's can, can i tell you a secret and can you keep it i say no i have a list okay. so i always tell them if you're going to hurt yourself if you're planning on hurting someone else if someone else is hurting you if if you have thoughts of self-harm it's always depending but at the end of the day, it's if you're in harm's way, I will not keep that secret. If you want to tell me that you have a crush on little Tommy or you got your girlfriend or boyfriend a cute little gift, I won't tell them. But I think that's a cute secret. That's a, that's like a cutesy secret. But if you're going to tell me a harmful one, it's not. So, And I have written some very intense uh, reports. So I've been told some information. Some kids just... They go through that list of those limits I give them. 
And then they say, okay, you know what? I can tell her it's fine. Um, and then when they tell me, it hits one of the red flags. So I leave it as in, I don't say anything to them, but I hop on my phone, write down the notes, write down the kid's grade, write down the timing, what happened before. And then I send all those pieces of information to all of my bosses. Yeah, and then that way it's off my hands. I can't do anything from there. It goes to administration, then they go to certain therapists. That's right. And they go to, it could be a gender therapist, it could be a site, it just, but they really start to go by just the therapist or counseling or psychiatry. That's right. So I could not, I, like, there are days where I, I literally could not imagine going home and holding that information. And thank God for my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> this year's been really tough. So I'm just letting. <laughs> God bless that that wonderful human. I love her. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, first off, thank you for that, because that's exactly what a teacher has always done. That's always been part of teaching. There's a thing called mandated reporting. I know, all, I, know I understand all of it, but you also have to have nuance in that, which you actually have. Yes. So, yeah, you're right. There's a difference with, oh, I have a crush on little Susie. Oh, what a great little secret, right? Oh, hey, Lord. <laughs> or, or I want to yeah. change my gender and I'm really Tommy and I want you to call me he and please don't tell my parents like the first when that comes out of the mouth to please don't tell my parents that's when the parents need to actually know what's going it's absurd yes. I cannot believe they're putting this in a space that they're letting teachers do this when I know so I want to ask you this as an educator do you yes. think there's more educators who are against this or are for this if that makes sense I would say in the environments that I've been, they are very open with the families. Now right. this can do with cultural um, things yeah. because I've worked in schools. So I work in the public sector Okay. Um, and I've worked in private sectors as well, but I'm very familiar with the public. Okay. Um, and when it comes to certain cultures, yeah. the LGBTQ community, is a is a no no topic. That's right. And if we so you need to respect that. Yes, That's it, right. it it is hurtful and it really does suck that people are closed minded. But that, those kids will grow up and develop their own That's thoughts right. And rationalize that's... for themselves because children are not stupid. And sometimes <laughs> they look at their parents and say, you know what you're saying? I think it's really dumb. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> or right. I don't agree with it. That's right. But I'm that's not right. going to end up on the street if I don't agree with you. So I... in those cultures, they they will tick up and yeah. say, Okay. Yeah. Susie or Tommy's parents yeah. are like this. Yeah. We need to handle this properly. We're going to yeah. bring this information to someone who is safe, where that child will not be harmed, so we can take the appropriate steps. That's yes. been the goal for all of the places that I've been. Excellent. It's always to make sure the child is safe. And I find a lot of people are very open. I've been very yes. lucky. Like when it yes. comes, there's been kids who are changing their gender, changing mm -hmm. their name. So what? what happens and i've seen it and i've heard it these kids come to me because yeah. they know that that like i guess for an umbrella term like they know yeah. that i'm queer because sure. i do since i'm part of the lgbtq club so yeah. and i'm very androgynous anyway i'm a right. tomboy i always right. have been like yeah. so they come up to me and they yeah. i'm i'm like the, the gay whisperer yeah uh, so, totally. excellent, <laughs> excellent. Like, oh my god but I have to keep up with the gender is changing, the name, the name's changing. But we need to make sure that we've ticked all the boxes. We know that the parents are involved. We know yes, that uh, the school's involved. So we can switch that involves <laughs> only. Okay, baby, give her come in. Only when <laughs> everyone knows. That's and right. And then we'll go from there. Okay. That that that's just the clearly appropriate thing to do. <laughs> why yes. so let me ask you this why would a teacher feel that they have the authority or even the <laughs> power to sort of take this on as a personal <laughs> experience <laughs> with the children <laughs> in the classroom I, I don't understand how a teacher where, where's a <laughs> disconnect there 
because a teacher cares about the kids. I know that about teachers. They're great. You guys are great. But I mean, I've had amazing teachers in my life. But that being said, there's always yeah. been a boundary around children and teachers, <laughs> right? There has to be. You have to have a boundary. But now I'm yes. seeing these queer, LGBT, trans, whatever teachers feeling that they have the authority to sort of take these children on. You know, I know that they're your kids. I get that terminology. But now yeah. it's feeling like... It's feeling creepy when they say my kids and it's feeling <laughs> but right. It is now. Now it's looking like that. You know, it's not looking like it's caring. It's looking more like I'm going to help this child become a queer kid. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Am I making sense here? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, I, I, I think it's because people, uh, <laughs> people feel special that if you, if you find out that you have a kid that doesn't open up a lot, and, and crash that. I've had kids that that deep in my soul and just say, I'm not going to tell you anything. Yeah. And I say, okay, yeah, do whatever. Can you do your work? That's and right. they just, they kind of look at me as in, you're not going to bother me? What is yeah. this about? Yeah. And then within a week, I know everything about their life. I don't pry. But these That's teachers, right. it's like, they think it's their job because that's this is what i'm viewing as like the for the creepy ones mm -hmm. it's almost like <laughs> very temp well you know queer is out of the world yes it is there are a lot of things that are a part of this world that kids only should learn about when they're older you that's can right. you can you can mention a, a gay person that's but right. i mean you don't need to go into it like right. the the situation I had, I said, I didn't feel comfortable talking about this. Speak to your parents. I shut it down. I sat on the couch. I looked really uncomfortable. I said, sure. you got to talk to your parents because this is that's not right. going to fly with me. This Excellent. is not going to go. Excellent. And, and that's what like, every teacher. Yeah. What, are you kidding me? Since when do teachers have private secret conversations with children and then acting like it's totally normal. And I do see this, uh, V. I see teachers saying stuff like, you don't have to tell your parents, we'll keep a secret. That's th the P yeah. word, you know what I mean? That That's a very much of a language of somebody who's, I'm gonna have to cut this out. Some child on some level, it is when you remove the parents from the children, mm -hmm. we know that that's an actual tactic of, I'm not saying all these teachers are, I'm saying that it's a form of indoctrination of a thought process because they're queer, right? That they think mm -hmm. all of a sudden that they're gonna be this safe, but that's the opposite of what a queer teacher should be doing. A queer teacher sh should yes. just be present in the classroom, whatever that means, and give teaching lessons and do all these things because then the kids are gonna see a normal queer person, right? Like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember I had a gay mm -hmm. teacher when I was a young, I mean, I knew he was, you could just, you know, maybe I'm making an assumption, oh, but yeah. you know, and no, I don't know. That, yeah. that teacher was amazing. I never, ever forgot that teacher. I never forgot yeah. him. There was something about him that made such a great impact on me, but I didn't know he was gay other than my assumption of it. Right. So, and yeah. he was a great role model for me as this sort of person. But that being said, what the heck is going on in education? What? I don't, I don't get it. Like, I, I know that people want to be more level with the kids and, but you can't be like the kids. So I think that's another there's, main thing too. They want to be like, you're not there. in the big brother, big sister program. You oh, are a teacher. Brilliant. Brilliant. You really need to just, if you want to be uh, a person who is helping to lead a vol uh, an LGBTQ volunteer yeah. place. Yeah. You can talk about more intense things if a kid is having a big issue. Yeah. So you can go more into depth with that. You, we can give you more resources because I have gone to those things. But when, for lack of a better term, when shit hits the fan and it gets really deep, we need to contact other people. We need That's to get right. some of the kids out of that room yeah. and we need to try and function. But it's this mentality of, well, I'm going to treat kids like humans. The way that I'm speaking to you, the tone that I'm using, yeah. this is what I used on my kindergartners. This is what I use with my other younger kids yeah. and then my, my older students. Yeah. I'm not at the level of I'm going to act like your buddy. And I have to admit, I've had very difficult uh students in the past mm -hmm. i've been called very colorful names uh there was there was a kid who who yelled at like he was so pissed off because i was asked like can you go and follow this student and i said yeah sure and then they look back and they go ah 
that, like stop fucking following me and i said sorry i'm paid to do this and wow. now this kid is older and they came up to me and they said hey miss and in my head i'm saying don't call me miss you're in your 20s now and then they say hey miss i'm having a house party do you want to go and i said to myself sweetheart i'm 28 years old <laughs> you're 19 that's really really creepy but thank you I think that's really sweet yeah. or I have kids that are still in school with me and they'll say, miss, you're like my best friend. And yeah. I'll say, I'm not your friend, but I'll be your mentor. Yeah. Uh, if anything. And they say, yeah, but you know, it's just, we can talk about scary movies. And wow. It's one particular girl and she's very sweet, very nice, but I yeah. always tell her and other kids, yeah. I say, I'm not your friend. I'm your mentor. If anything, if you want to think of me that way. Brilliant. So, Brilliant. Where and then that's, that's, what your, that's what you have to do. Adults have to have boundaries around children. And, you know, nineteen is necessary, okay, but it is on this um, on this particular. And you are an educator. Where are the boundaries? Yeah. I'm, I, I, exactly. The, where are, where have the boundaries between teacher and child, student, whatever you want to call where where it's been it's been thrown out the window, and it's How? Like, it's just I I just don't understand, and it's. I know this is everyone's favorite person, you know, the one that has the online following of all these oh children of oh let God. go of your oh family. Yeah, we always, I would never. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's amazing how many people bring that person up with me. Almost every person I interview, that means he's literally being seen by ever believe me he's on the fbi list i'm pretty sure of it <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure of it at this point that, that yeah that's my point he, he's a great example of leave your your parents don't understand you. all the stuff that comes out of that person's mouth join me in my private group your parents will understand you what is he he uses this language of disconnect or something like he uses a yes. very specific wording that's so creepy your parents don't understand you but i and do the cadence as well and i'm like oh no 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 is this uh, chishy bang bang uh, like do you have candy in your car totally and I, like and I, uh, <laughs> uh, oh man oh and like it's just you can't you first of all you cannot do that second of all in a school because i've heard kids talk too and they go oh my god that teacher's so creepy they just oh, want to be our age wow. i don't understand That's... like you're not my friend you why you're talking me about to me about this That's and so i don't like you so like the kids i'm telling you three and i just took two fingers well <laughs> they got the cuter. three <laughs> three two again yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Right. like um but it's just one of those things where these kids actually notice and they're not stupid okay this is great thank you for that because it's the yeah. first time i heard that that actual students are kind of noticing that some of these teachers are infil uh, infiltrating or whatever losing boundaries losing this 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 yeah. sort of wall that needs to be between a student they're not I'm, as a teacher you're not the friend of my of my of my child by the way i'm a, I, I am a dad and i have an 11 year old there you go. and if i found out that that teacher was sort of hanging out with my kid or saying, oh. you know, i would oh <laughs> i am that dad by the way who marches down to the squirrel Good. <laughs> you, and you will not talk to my child that way and i will file reports against you so i do think we need to start filing some kind of reports against these certain types of teachers is that a possibility to do within the oh. educational system you know i i'm not sure but mm, there have okay. you know what that that is a lie that i've heard of things happening where a teacher can have a file like humongously okay. large of not necessarily speaking with teacher with sorry with students and uh speaking to, to them, them about um inappropriate or like trying to be friends and things right. like that okay um but it could be really harmful things uh okay. and just putting them down and but it's impossible for them to be fired because wow. it's 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 tenure it's it's the union, union. Ten so yeah then let me ask you this as a teacher um 
are there aren't there any sort of like let's just say teacher rules right so you get like this is what you can and cannot do within your classroom is there something that a teacher sort of has to read or see before they sort of become a teacher of a classroom does that make sense like rules you can't bring certain things into the classroom you can't post (laughs) flags all over the wall and buttons and pants and pronoun but that's like bringing your whole agenda to the classroom but is there something that states that teachers sort of can't be putting their agenda in the classroom Uh, no i don't think so wow but i i also when i walk around i do see that there are uh, like little flags and little displays in our school for the LGBTQ club, but we also have flags to like Black Lives Matter okay. and like as all children for other... the indigenous. There are, and they're all large yeah. in the hallway, right. but it's no not issues, strictly yeah. rainbows and butterflies. Like it's not just the LGBTQ community; it's all communities. Okay. So that's right. the only difference. But right. you will never walk into a classroom and see a large rainbow flag or like okay. a, a poster of like two men two women or a trans person That's like great. making out or showing yeah. off their top st- like it'll yeah, never it'll stars. never happen well yeah, it happens just, here it happens here i you i haven't seen it possible the that i've been in but maybe it's happening at different schools and nothing's Dif- right. Being said. That's right but that, it's that's a possibility right. for everywhere but that, yeah, be because happy. that's my point. I don't ah. think there is a thing a teacher ah. has to say that a teacher has to like sort of sign that says, you're not, you know, you can't bring your, so, so for example, you know, I don't see teachers who are Christian posting Christian stuff all over their classroom or exactly. being Bibles and passing it mm-hmm. out to all the kids in the room, a Bible, right? Because people would lose their shit over that. But how come mm-hmm. now we have, and I'm telling you, I live in California. Teachers are doing this a lot here in yeah. this, in this state. It's crazy. They've lost their mind. And I, so, so I know, I guess you can't really answer it, but I guess I'm putting that out there to the world too. These are things that we as, as parents, as well as taxpayers, should be pushing against that teachers should not be able to bring you can bring a picture of you and your husband maybe or wife or girlfriend or partner oh, yeah. who cares about that who cares yeah. but i'm talking about actual there's i saw a kid i saw an actual kindergarten teacher talk about how she brings pronoun pins to kindergarten and hands them out to the kids and i'm like I, I, these are kindergartners they're not what the heck's going on here they want to grow up to be spider-man <laughs> Like, I know, which is, I, oh my god makes my heart melt they're, oh. they're all, i want to be a lawyer i want to be a yeah, cop i want to do that totally. i want to be an astronaut totally. i love it but why are you confusing people like it's just i don't understand i i will say so i when i when i was growing up i was yeah. a very big tomboy anything yeah. girly related absolutely yeah. not no dresses no pants like i just wanted like long pants or shorts i wanted yeah. to play sports wanted to play hockey lacrosse all these things yeah. anything girly no, no but my like my sibling loves dresses loves everything but i was never forced of well you need to do this maybe it's for like a wedding which i understand but totally. my mom just knew oh she's a tomboy yeah so right. then on top of that like when i would find certain things out and also my my mom has friends who are gay and i remember one day she said we're gonna we're gonna go and visit a friend of mine they're sad because like him and his boyfriend broke up and i said okay and uh i was there were a lot of gay couples around but then i saw two men holding hands i went oh my god they're holding hands and she said yeah that's because they love each other just like a man Uh and a woman can love each other and a woman and a woman and then as i got older i saw commercials for um the movie uh boys don't cry which i know of course like people complain about it and like i'm not part of the community so i won't i won't i won't go into it because i i don't have the right to i guess but yeah, you do. i okay, <laughs> yeah, you do. i, think it's I really, said you do it's about Brit. thank you perfect so and it's like brandon tina is a real person so when i asked my mom I, I said, what's transgender? And yeah. um, she said, she said in layman's terms, since I was younger, she said, okay, well, imagine it if a, a girl, if a girl, when, when she's little, she realizes, or little or any age, she realizes she has a real body, but she has a boy brain. So it doesn't fit. So then as they get older, they realize, oh, I don't fit in my body. So then they make it so they look like a boy and then it matches their brain 
and she didn't say you know what since you dress uh, since you're a tomboy that means you're a girl that means you're a boy this whatever right, right. she never said that and in right. fact she would she would say you can wear whatever you want or i'd say mom i really want a short haircut and right. she would say you know if i cut your hair and it's short and it looks like a boy yeah. you can't look at me and say that i messed up right on because you need to style it if you right want on. it to look girly because if i cut it like this and someone calls you buddy don't get mad at me and but she'd still let me cut my hair and That's i right. wouldn't style it but she would always say whatever it's not my problem but yeah but that's such great said. parenting it's great. No, it is because yeah. I, why now are we saying, look, we have regret. That's so beautiful because you're just like, this is how it is. Kids try stuff on. You're going to make a mistake and then you're going to learn from it. You didn't, you shouldn't have cut your hair. Or maybe not. Right. Blah, blah, blah. All the things that we should be teaching kids making mistakes are very important for children to make mistakes. How else do you learn? All of a sudden now you can't even make a mistake. You're held to it for the rest of your life. Th that being said, where ha where did where did we make this turn? Because it used to be all about getting rid of gender stereotypes. That I thought we were at that point where girls could look like boys, boys could look like girls, nobody cared. Everyone was wearing black nail polish. Remember that? Boys were wearing black nail polish and eyeliner. Love it. And they were still boys, Love it. right? Like, and then what? happened <laughs> i have i have no clue and i don't understand with little kids of like they haven't even taken classes of like pu for puberty I'm like, can we just like once they learn how to pronounce their r's like can, and that can we just take it to the next level of learning and if they're really suffering and struggling then that's we right. can get on to the pronouns and and you need to go and go that's right see a doctor even that's then right. it's scary because it takes five seconds but i'm like <sighs> why are you giving up pronoun pins because first of all you're you're wasting school funding totally <laughs> Thank you. And we need a lot of stuff. Thank you. And also, like a, like a pen, maybe, and some paper. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, I'm I'm handing out pe pencils from my my fucking purse. I my know. Kid. Believe Miss, me, I know. Have... Oh I my know. god, kid. it's crazy. My kids are saying, "Oh, do you have a pencil? Do you have a pen? Do you have I a know. ruler?" And I look I in my pocket sarcastically, and I go, "I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't bring my protractor to class today." <laughs> like, do I look like a, a yeah? Pencil but the today? fact that we're more worried about pronouns and all of that stuff than we're worried about a pen and a paper and making sure these kids have the fundamental understanding of math and science and English and I, I, I mean, here in this particular uh, in the United States, we are regressing mm -hmm. when it comes to the education of our children i think you'd probably know that too we are far behind almost yeah. every other country teachers are literally leaving in droves We're, i mean the stuff i see Canada's teachers getting it too oh my god i'm like teachers are like why should i do this these kids are like literally kicking me in my balls on and throwing shit at me and calling me names and <laughs> i'm like no teacher should ever and no where, so that's also a really huge problem. But but getting back to the, this idea that yeah. now we can sort of indoctrinate, because that is, I don't care what anybody says, bringing pronoun pins to kindergarten is indoctrination on some level because you're teaching a kid at this other way of being. And maybe I don't want you to. Maybe I don't want that stuff in my child's head. Maybe you don't have the right to tell my child that there's they, them pronouns, right? I don't want my kid even yeah. near that stuff. But yet a teacher is able to do that behind my back as a as a parent? I mean, I don't like that because first of all, I'm thinking of when I worked in kindergarten and the things that they concentrate on have nothing to do with gender. And even looking back on myself, I didn't focus on gender. I knew that I was a girl. That's right. Because I was, I was right. and the, this like assigned female, I did watch your interview with the uh, intersex person. And I was thinking all these people want to make sure that they use the appropriate things and you don't want to appropriate things. So why are you appropriating something totally. that came from the intersex community? Totally. It's how that works. Interesting. But I was just like, absolutely not. It's like you're contradicting yourself, my love. Like, what are you doing? Continually. So Cont it's just that's I why can't. an interview with you as an educator is also going to break open people's <laughs> minds and go, Oh, that's what's happening. Oh, guess what? Not all Teachers are cool with this. Guess what? It's a very specific type of teacher. Oh, but the thing that's happening that I see is more teachers are grabbing onto this sort of queer theory, right? Like, like eliminating biology, eliminating sex things, eliminating things that will actually destroy these kids. They will grow up with yeah. some crazy thought process that 
will take them out. They won't be successful because now they're going to be on the fringe of society thinking they're non-binary and like, and no one's expecting my pronouns. They're teaching these kids such bad behavior. They're, I'm telling you, I was a bad kid. I was a bad, I was just bad, bad things. I totally so was confused. Be my favorite. I love the behavioral kids. Oh, what the? I was that kid, right? All over the place. Like, like just, you know what I mean? Maybe if I had a little bit more structure or I don't really know, but something, but I can relate to kids who aren't getting this particular thing. I, I had a hard time studying. I, I probably have ADHD. I never was, you know, I probably have all kinds of stuff that I was never, yeah. you know, I'm 61. So I didn't, back in the day, they didn't do that. But my point being is, instead of focusing on helping this kid get into a space so that they can become a badass, we're literally telling these yeah. kids, you know, their gender doesn't exist and you can be a Zazam Zer bo balloon person. Like, what? Like, I mean, how, I, it's, I don't know even how to say it, but for me, it feels like child abuse. It's just, it would be so confusing. So I was a kid who had, and I'm, I'm an adult that has, has OCD. So yeah. I needed things to be black and white. So if they was added or if different genders, and yes. I would, have, I mean, it's OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. I would obsess and I would right. think to myself, okay, right. well, what if I'm not this gender? What if I'm yeah. actually this gender? But yeah. what if I'm both? And yeah. it could affect OCD because obsession. And I would hone in on obsessions for every type of thing, for That's movies, right. for books, for all those things, mm -hmm. but with gender, mm -hmm. Just, I don't understand. It's when they're little, boy, girl, whatever. whatever. And as they That's get it. older, they're going to find out from right. the internet because five-year-olds can break into phones. But it's just That's like, right. they're not right. talking about that. They're talking about how they got invited to someone's birthday party and they're so excited to have the dinosaur cake. There but you go. Like, there they should go. not be saying, oh, well, I'm going to their birthday party. They are turning this. They are turning that. Or Z is turning this. It's I like, know. I'm sorry. Is that a word that you made up during make-believe? Or is that uh, is that a word yeah. that you made up or are using as a gender? Like, that's what where... I'm saying. They're, they're, they're trying to put this in 10-year-old kid. My Same. son, again, 11, comes home from school saying, oh, there was a non-binary kid at school. I'm like, what? And he's laughing. That's how great that generation is getting it. He's laughing. They're like, oh, I'm like, dude. He's like, oh, no, they're they're not real. And I'm like, thank God. Each, he goes, we laugh at them. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, these kids are going to be the next gen. We're like, yeah, they're totally. So I do see on some level it's getting pushed out. But I'm very, very concerned with this particular generation. I think it might be like from 15 no. to 25, whatever generation that is. They have lost their minds. They're angry. They're disconnected. They're being lied oh to. God. I really think that they know they're being lied to. I really do. But at the same time, they're so yeah. trapped into it because if they don't do it, they're not liked by their friends. It's a peer pressure, right? There's a ton of peer mm -hmm. pressure in this whole trans, non-binary. And also, I don't know if you noticed this, B. But autism is really yes. a huge part of this young trans yeah. generation. What the heck is that? Yes. Okay. So as a person who does work with a lot of people with autism, I've, yeah. I've seen autism since I was 15. So okay. I, okay. I, I'm very familiar with that, even right. younger. Um, right. But I know that with those kids, sometimes they can go through fads. Sometimes they can go through specific um topics that they are obsessing over okay uh they'll learn things they can be very blunt and say that's stupid or they mm -hmm. can say oh maybe i am that or even without a diagnosis of autism they say oh i'm autistic okay but how do you know like Bam. i i have health issues i can't go around saying that i have health issues like i say i have ocd I didn't take an online test. I didn't watch a TikTok. I was tested. I have, I, I sound like Sheldon from the Bay series. It's just, I've been tested. My mother has me tested. I have OTD. <laughs> like, there and you I go. Know this, but these kids don't know if they have it for sure. They throw it around. And I know that... Okay, I know that in Canada our our healthcare is free, but it's still difficult, and we have to wait a long time yes. to see specific doctors. But yes. that doesn't mean that you can go and diagnose yourself because you're getting the wrong treatments. That's right. That's right. And but you also need documentation that says okay, 
the that's right. Isn't I have, and then they'll be able to treat you properly. But that's right. You can't just say that because it's also insulting to the the population Hello, with it's... autism. Same with you trans people, They're tr self diagnosed. They're self diagnosing as trans. Number one, because this is a medical condition. I have a mental disorder. This is yes. not normal, people. It is not something everyone has because they think they have it. Just so. So that being said, I just interviewed this. Up. Oh God, it's gonna make you cry. The interview. It's coming up. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's gonna the whole interview. Uh, she, 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 she. She's a mom of an autistic child of. 13 years old and the shit she's had to deal with. So she's like, I'm gatekeeping autism. These kids on TikTok are taking what my son, then she goes into, he can't, you know, he can't take care of himself. He has to wear diapers at 13. And she's just, it's, it's so emotional. And she's like, you know, when I die, who's going to take care of my child? And then I see, you know, yeah. a teacher locked her child into a closet, okay, at school. And she said, then all the kids were like, I have autism because it's cool. So I'm, and she's just bawling because she's like, you know, how do you think that makes people who really have to deal with people with autism feel? And I said, oh my God, I completely understand what you're saying because I feel this sort of same way when these kids are saying they have gender dis, they ha they are trans with no gender dysphoria. How do you think that makes me feel? I I don't want to be trans, by the way. I I can't stand being trans. I hate it, but I have it. If that makes sense. And it's like, mm -hmm. there's nothing I can do about it except what I do here. But it's not joyful. It's not euphoria. It's not those that. And so the lady was telling me that that language also comes from the autism community. And I'm like, oh, what? Oh. And they're faking stemming, she said. They're faking all this stuff on the internet. So those yeah. kids don't like having stems, they get made fun of. That's and right. I've that's I've right. seen stems where people literally get up and jump and they have an arm up or they're doing things that That's are right. loud. And those yes. kids around yes. them, the yeah. kids are mean and they are mean. jerks and they are they are growing up, but they are mean. So why would someone right. want to pretend to have autism? It's not easy. Some kids are nonverbal yeah. and I right. watch them and I I remember that there were some kids that were making fun of the kids with autism. So I stood up in front of one of my classes and I was frustrated and it was very close to a holiday coming up. And I said, listen, I've heard what's been happening and I'm really mad. And at first I thought to myself, I'm not going to point out the students, but then I did. So I spoke to the whole class. I said, you're all rude. You're disrespectful. You're mouthing yeah. back to the teacher. You're mouthing back to me. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's not adorable. I hate it. Sadly, I'm very happy to be away from you for a while. And also, you guys badmouthing the people in resource who have disabilities that they cannot help and that they struggle with daily is ridiculous. So I looked at the two kids who did that and I said, so, Tommy and Mitchell, do I have your attention? Do you understand what I'm uh -huh. talking about? Exactly. And they looked at me with their head because I don't yell. And they look at me and they looked so embarrassed. And wow. I had to take one of the kids back to where they need to be because that child has physical disabilities. So I'm like, <sighs> you have a disability, but you're making fun of kids with disabilities. You so you're doing what you're, you're hating on your own community in a sense. I know it's yeah. different disabilities, but I was like, yeah. for a, a dis another disabled child to make fun of another disabled child is... Yes disgusting yes. and then it's just you can't you can't do that it's it's not do fun. that so these are saying i have it it's so trendy it's not trendy it's difficult we oh make God. we make so many things to adapt to how they learn why yes. are you faking and you're taking away yes. that attention from a kid who needs it because you say you have autism yes like no, no we need to put these kids papers, in my dear it's so insane to me that kids are doing it tenfold it's t i really do it's TikTok. it's social media they're, they're getting accolades we all know that right a kid loves it when my kid plays a piano and we're just like oh my god it's amazing he keeps playing the piano right because we're just like stroking him you know oh my <laughs> god it's amazing so you don't think a kid is like oh i'm autistic i'm trans i'm non-binary i'm they zim zer they're getting oh you're loved you're part of us oh it's it's just so obvious what's happening here yet where are the adults where are the adults why are they not why are we not i mean we are look at we're talking about it but yeah we, i think some of the adults are caught up in this sort of thing and 
pushing they, it. Yeah, I mean, they are. And and like I told you when, when we were emailing, like, I'm not a parent. And I might get yeah, yeah. shat on for that. No. And I know I called my students, like, my kids. That's and okay. And they're like, that's weird. And I'm like, okay, but it's not. Like, you realize it's I am not. with you for, like, longer than your parents during the that's... week. I'm not insulting your parents. I'm just telling no. you a fact. No, but so I want to say kid. something before you move on. I, I want to say something before you move on real quick here about that. Now, that being said, yeah. I, I have actually attacked some of the queer teachers who call, say they're my kids because it looks creepy because they're saying stuff it like does. it. But a teacher in general has always said my kids. That is not new. That is not some, something that should be weird. It shouldn't be weird because you do care about the kids. And that, said, that to me, that language says you care about these kids, my kids. But mm -hmm. the problem is now we have weirdos, right, saying weirdo stuff, and then those two things together now look so creepy and messed up. That's, again, where they're derailing, those weirdos are derailing everything that we have made into such a lovely, beautiful – teachers should be revered. Teachers should be given paid so much money. If it wasn't for teachers, these kids don't I would have – I mean, seriously, I don't even understand how teachers don't. I don't. I really don't. Teachers are, are, are the most one of the most important things we have as a society for young people, even older people, Thank to you. get to the next level. And I don't understand how we don't put every countries like Asia. All, they really focus on that. And if you see, yeah. you can see the outcome of that, right? It's a real mm -hmm. thing. And so we yeah. don't focus on that here. That also says something to me. Why are we not focusing yeah. on the education of the people who will be taking over the next level? Why are we – We're. I really feel like we're dumbing kids down on, on some level. They we're just, can't read. They uh, – what reading is a reading is a punishment for me it was wow. just it, wow. it was a fun activity that's like, what it should for be for me that's... i literally had reading taken away if i did something bad that was that's my right. punishment that's my right. bedtime story was taken away that... i would cry yes but now it's your s box it's getting taken away I... <laughs> your, your ipad your switch and I would be like, okay, cool. Can I play outside now? But I'm like, now they're like, what? oh my God, a book. I'm being punished. I have That's to read right. a book. That's right. I'm That's like, I, I wow. wish. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Again, I'm gonna, not that I'm trying to be a great parent here, but uh, uh reading is on the thing. We, you do not get to do X, Y, and Z until you have to read a book every day for 20 minutes. You read, but he loves reading. It's great. Do you know what I mean? And you find Same. the books that kids love to read, that anime stuff. They love, you know, he loves that Japanese, yeah. whatever it's called. It's awesome. The drawings are cool, and I'm taking <laughs> oh, him to phenomenal. Japan. I'm taking him to Japan in in, in June so that we can literally have an actual oh, experience of all of that stuff. So he continues to read you know i'm focused the reading is so That's amazing it's yeah. profound when you when a kid can like seriously sit and read take away from the electronics and i do believe that that's true it's become a punishment how sad how actual sad it's, is that it's so upsetting and wow. then when they when they're allowed to go back on it they go back on TikTok, and then they become even more hateful. More insane, and so my like, parents. <laughs> young, my parents are doing this. Now I I'm going to go and watch a TikTok on third wave feminism <laughs> on how I want to accept everyone, but I hate cis hats white men, <laughs> and I just want to accept everybody, and I want them to love me. <laughs> it's like, oh I know it's actually mind-blowing. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> what? What did you just say? Oh, God. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. It's, oh. it's literally Saturday Night Live has come. Saturday Night Live has become reality. <laughs> yeah, oh, it really God. has. But it's oh. just, I, I just can't. I just don't understand. They Me get either. like, it's but sad. they get candy and everything. But it's like they're so hateful in the hallways yes. and wow. like they even. I wanted to, uh, to add because like you were saying, like you're you're trans and it's not fun it's not mm -hmm. a fad obviously mm -hmm. yeah. and it's so like it's hurtful to me to see how people will hurt the trans community by what they do so i'll see yeah. 
trans kids saying, oh, well, they're bi- biologically a girl. And then they're yeah. saying, oh, but I'm a boy. I want people to call me he, him. But they come into school. They're wearing, like, high boots and then, totally. like, fishnets and totally. a skirt and, yep. like, a, a, a tank top and yep. makeup and hair done. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. And then their argument yep. is, but I can wear whatever I want, whatever gender can wear whatever you want. And I'm like, absolutely not, sweetie. That's because right. if I want to be viewed as if I were trans, I would want to be as passable as possible. I would cut my hair. I would That's not right. wear makeup. I would, I shop in the guy section anyway. So it's like, I would take like a top that I got from from the store and I would take tensor bandages or something to flatten my chest, not show off my chest. So you can do all of these, you can say, yeah, any gender can wear anything. Yeah, I'm biologically a woman and I identify as a woman. So I'll dress in like guy's clothing, but I'm not saying you need to call me or like he, him. Like I'm, if you called me he, him, I would like, I'd be a little bit insulted. I'm like, okay, I know that I barely have any boobs and like, I look really androgynous, but like, yeah. seriously, I'm a chick. Like, yeah, right on, it. right and on. And it's not fair for you guys because it invalidates your existence because That's you guys right. do exist. That's and right. It just, and it's, it's just like the kids who want to transition, they, they change their pronouns and their names. Like they change their underwear. That's and why they're, I'm telling you, they're not trans. Like no, because yeah. again, I, I, I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but that's why I tell you there's a difference between a transsexual, me, a medical condition, yeah. mental disorder, all of it, blah, blah, blah. Then there's trans, which is now an identity choice. It has become yes. an identity. I don't identify as trans. I identify as a male, right? I want, exactly. I had a sex change. I mean, it's so obviously different so that's why i sort of gave over it's like go ahead and be under the trans umbrella but understand the difference between a transsexual and a transgender person but the problem with this is we're we're lying to these kids first off we're lying that you can change your sex because you can't i never change my sex we're lying that anyone can be trans we're lying that you can choose your identity when you really cannot do that you can do that later on in life but right now you're a boy or you're a girl and also why are we telling these little girls that they even need to identify as a he him why can't they just identify as a girl and that's powerful so my idea was why are we not starting organizations organizations to empower girls why don't we have girl organizations that say you're a badass chick who can kick ass on all that's what my dad did with me and my two sisters we were those there girls that came in and ripped the shit out of dudes we like we were like yes, beating all uh... the dudes and the races everything right because my dad said just because you're a girl doesn't mean you can't be a badass and that was always instilled in our mind. And I I think that we've regressed. And if you notice all the conversation about all of this trans identity shit is around girls and women. It's always girls. What the fuck? The kids Excuse I my see, language. It's always no, no, no. It's fine. I've already sort of gone through. Like, <laughs> Body mouth. Honestly, like, I know. I I swear, like a sailor, and it's Me so too. difficult telling kids off. It's <laughs> totally. like, hey, wipe your mouth. Even though I'm like just you're saying, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, in my mind, I'm like, fuck you, fuck you, you're an asshole. Like, totally. I can't. I can't. No, no, no. It's either. just <laughs> oh, but like that's how that's how it should. Be like you just what? don't focus on gender with your kids. Like That's just, right. just That's I right. just don't understand right. it. And then it creates animosity, and people are looking down. And there's, That's there's, right. I don't like. Okay, I like being part like of the acronym of LGBT. Sure. I don't mind being sure. seen as like a bisexual person, but I don't want to associate myself with the community because of the way that they act. Everyone Me says, too. oh my God, it's so wonderful. It's nope. so nice. That's because it's said by straight people who aren't <laughs> part of it and they don't know what's going on. <laughs> so and I'm not calling straight people stupid. I'm no, just saying no. like, you it's don't true. know. You don't know. <laughs> No clue. It's like you're not <laughs> trans enough. You're you're not Ugh. gay enough. You're femme. Like for me, it's like if I'm dating a guy, I'm not part of it anymore. That's right. It's like you're in a straight That's relationship, right. so right. you don't yep. count. So oh, I count, is. and then I don't count. 
Oh, no, it's, it's, you know, the thing that's sad to me, V, is that it wasn't always this way. Remember, I've been in this community no. for 40-plus years. It was not. I mean, we've always had our weird little thing. Bi has always been the sort of outlier. You know, oh, you're just gay. You just don't know. It's crap like My that. My mom like, would say it was like the stepping stone because she, uh, she's no, the same, Katie, it's around all the same well. ages, yeah. That's what everyone said. And I know it's all about actually you're jealous of us because we because I'm by too. Because we can have everything. <laughs> we get <Exactly>. it all. <laughs> so yeah, you're jealous. <laughs> exactly what my mom said to me when I came out and I was twelve. I was like, I think we're bisexual. She goes, You know what? You have more chances of a date on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, the thing that is so fascinating to me is also this desire to appropriate uh, what a lesbian is, what a gay man is, what, you know, I, I, and this idea that bisexuality is also this bad thing because now it's all about pan. And I'm like, what? I don't care what your identity choice is. You're either a man or a woman. Everything else is just sort of like your illusion of whatever that is. But the reality of it is, is you can call yourself pansexual all you want, but you're actually bisexual. It means you're going to either be attracted to a male or woman, however that situation is. But there, there's this desire to take out biology. And there's this desire to yeah. say that those things are social constructs. Can you imagine it how aren't. they are? What? They are clearly... I am a woman. Whether you want to believe it or not, I don't yeah. give a shit. I am an actual female woman who decided that I needed to look like a man in order for everyone to see me. It's so simple, V. It's mm -hmm. such a simple story that I can tell you that everyone goes, oh, I get it. But those people over there are going, blah, 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 and expecting everyone to understand what they're saying. And I'm like over here going, yes. it's real simple. I was a, I'm a chick who wants to look like a dude, cut my tits off, take this ass around, look like a dude, <laughs> and now here I am. And no one calls me she ever again. <laughs> there you go. That's, That's so exactly stupid. it. And yeah, that's like they have like six or seven identities. And that's I'm like, right. I, I just that's asked if you were a guy or a girl. I didn't ask you who you wanted in your pants, who you thought about in your head, who you have a crush on, who your totally. Disney character crushes, and oh who was your sexual god. awakening. Like, oh my god, what? <laughs> what about the furry thing? The furry thing actually freaks me out because furries come from the adult entertainment space. That furry comes from a, a okay. fetish. It comes from adult. It does. I'm telling you right now. I know. I've been around that for many years. We used to have furry conventions, which was a sexual thing, and people have sex in these outfits. I'm not kidding. That's what a furry is. Now kids are calling themselves furries. Look it up. That language comes from the adult, like, sexual space. And I am like, people oh don't god. even, oh my god. And, you know, then they're, they're called, like, trans guys calling it their front hall. That also comes from the adult entertainment space. And now doctors in UK are like, they're calling it a front hole. I'm like, you people are sick because when you start to dismantle our own biology, right? I have a vagina, oh, which needs to have certain kind of care. And I have no problem yeah. saying that. And I need to be honest about it in order for me to have a healthy transition. But you can't call You can't walk into a doctor's office and say my front hole is having <laughs> certain problems. I'm like, what? What's your front hole? <laughs> Yeah. It is this dismantling oh of language, God. dismantling of biology, dismantling of what it is even to be a human being at this point, that anyone can choose to be whatever they want to be. How How is that? Uh, we're going to have to end here soon, but I want to ask you one thing. Yeah. How is any of this, as an educator, how is any of this helping us to move forward in the world? It's not. And, like, I, I will mm. say, like, I'm not sitting here saying that, like, everything – uh, is perfect over here it's not i'm very no. lucky with where i worked and where i have worked but yeah. i have a feeling that this is happening everywhere in canada um That's but this right. is getting us nowhere and sometimes i feel like it's regressing like you said they call it their front hole and things like that like wow. i have friends who wow. tell their children like if like i need to i need you to call your anatomy what it is if you have a penis you have a penis vagina vagina and my uh, i have a friend who did that with uh with their kids and said if you are god forbid anyone touch you you That's tell right. an adult That's uh right. someone touched my penis That's someone right. touched my vagina use proper language That's because right. it's not a bad word and people will take you seriously. So we're telling them, you know what? You can be whatever you want to be. You can do this. You can do that. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's all of this. Yeah. And then it's like, but 
it's not true like we need to be realistic like believe what you want to believe but it's that's right it's not true that's right but and that's why they came after jk oh. rowling right because jk rowling is like i don't care what you do i don't care what it, it, but minute sex is still real and sex attracted people and when you start dismantling it she just said nothing transphobic zero and as a transsexual elder i am telling you that is also a complete gaslighting, manipulation, and attack on a person who is saying the truth. And they try to shut people down. They, you know, they try to shut me down. They try to shut... You can't shut people like that up who are saying the actual truth. But then that's why everyone's looking now at the trans community like everyone's a wing nut. And I get sucked into that, right? Like, oh, Buck's trans. He must be a wing nut, too. And I'm like, wait! That, Absolutely You see not. what happens? You get, when you're part of a group of people, like, you know, I guess I, I can use black people, right? Like, not all black people think like, not all black people are conservative. Hell no. Or, or, uh, hell no. That's a, a, insulting. <laughs> that is insulting to say that a yeah. black person can't be conservative or a black person only has to do. It's the same with a trans person. Just because I'm trans does not mean I have to agree with anything coming out of that space, especially yeah. because of my long lived experience of this, of right? Of course. It's like- But you're uh, still a human, you have your own belief system. And now we're not allowed, only they're allowed to have a belief system, by the way. Did you notice that too? Only they can have these really whacked out ways of of thinking and forcing teachers to do not nonsensical cool stuff. So. You know, V, no. you're awesome. I, I really do appreciate Thank your you. time. You have a great energy. I can see you're probably the most amazing teacher. I wish you were my, I wish you, I would have had you as a teacher. <laughs> yeah, you seem amazing. I bet you're awesome. And you know, I just value you. I value you first off as a human, but secondly, as an educator, because it is a hard Thank job you. and you're doing the work to help us without people like you, we would not have a great society. And it's, I feel it's crumbling. We, we built such a, I do too. We, we built such a great world to live in. Of course, it's always things are hard some here and there, but I think in, on, uh, if you just look at it from where we were and where we are today, come on, man. Like what, how, how is the LGBTQIA PP poo poo become such a toxic environment? It's toxic. It's and I, I hear my kids talking and they, they hate on it. They think it because See? it's so aggressive. So it, you're, pu you're pushing your allies away. You're That's pushing right. your allies away. That's because right. we all need allies. So you need to accept the majority into your minority. And then you can get further in life. And you because we kicked out some kids out of our club and we said, this is for everyone. If you want yep. to speak badly of your majority, then yep. you can leave. And some kids actually left. Wow. I said, okay, cool. So wow. you're getting rid of your allies. Yep. So the minority right. left because they couldn't hate on the majority that wants to help them. That's so right. We need to come together as in me to support one another. So we actually have <laughs> progression Ugh. that we so badly want. That's so. right. That's why you joining me and us building this channel together. And I tell you us, because I believe in this as more of a community channel than anything else. Thank this you. is how we get back because I bring people like you and you have the, you have the really thank you big heart to come on and say these things, even though you have to cover up and we all get it. I we know. all we, more than anything. We appreciate your voice and we, ex we, we really respect that you had to do that, but don't forget everybody. She had to cover her face. This is in 2024, and this woman has to cover her face. That, don't ever so forget stupid. that, and that scares me. So thanks, V. You're beautiful and awesome, and now we're friends. Thank I'm you always, so I always much. Make we friends. are. <laughs> and Nirvana, Nirvana. Yeah, I'm wearing a, a trans icon. I'm wearing a trans icon. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm a big what? Nirvana fan. Like, I, so I am literally... I Oh. Yeah, my 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 I set up on top of my Nirvana book, which is the diary of Kurt Cobain. Right. No on. Does it say that he wanted to be gay so he could support <laughs> a gay kid in, in when he was thirteen? He didn't wow. want to be gay because he was gay. Also, right. he just wore dresses to be comfy, and he didn't oh care. He oh it was God. just shock value. It's called oh shock God. value. Totally. All the born did not eat a bat and become this crazy <laughs> cannibal I mean, he, person. Like, he's what? rolling around. <laughs> he's rolling around in his grave for reals. So like, shut that up, lady. Poor man. Mister, shut up, mister. You don't know what you're... I hate that person on the fucking TikTok who said that. I, I despise that person. And you know what? I don't care. That person doesn't get my respect calling him or she. I don't. I won't. Because I believe that no. person is not trans. I think they're a cross-dresser, transvestite, fetishizing my uh... space 
Yes, uh, I do. I 100% believe that. I can tell. I know the energy. I've been doing this a long time. The energy and this idea that they're getting accolade after accolade for being a dude and talking about their, you know, penis and cutting a, a, a piece of meat. I'm like, what? A banana split? You, a kid can see that. You don't think it that's It doesn't a matter what they're watching. That's, that's right totally targeting Doesn't kids matter. that person has a huge plat million i think a million something followers that's people pay attention we have opened the door for these weirdo p people i call them p people <laughs> the no <laughs> yeah no i i get that yep. and honestly like who i know that you would never film yourself being misgendered and put it on the internet what i know that i'd never so see you do it never first so off how those how can you say you're trans when you do that? That's right. That is exact. And then clearly misgendering uh, Kate, Kurt Cobain. Clearly disrespecting everything you're doing. You just did to Kurt Cobain. You weirdo. You, I know. What a weirdo. A complete narcissistic I weirdo can't. dude who cut his penis off and is telling the whole world about it. Like he's fetishizing. That's a fetish because he's getting accolades. A, a real trans person would never do that. Ever talk that, about exactly. it. Just go in and do their thing and come out of it. This person is fetishizing their transition because they know that it's freaking people. It, it's just a whole psychological crap. It's so uh, weird. It's, it's frustrating. Thank oh, you, friend. Yay. Have a beautiful you rest of your so day. Much, Thank you, you everybody too. for joining us. Leave her awesome, beautiful comments, please. She <laughs> stepped up and no, I'm not kidding. Like people actually are awesome on my channel. They're not rude. And I rude. love them. Yeah, I love your interviews. They're so and... thank you. Well, you're now one of them. So it's so awesome. <laughs> and you'll inspire <laughs> other ed you'll inspire other educators to come to me. So that's how it I hope so. Oh, you will. It, it it does. I see how this works. And um so don't forget Wednesday, my live. I'll see you guys all next week. Thank you so much. Comments, all those things. And I'll see you guys on the next one.